Okay, next item is public presentations. Public presentation time is intended as an opportunity for the public to give input on relevant issues and not intended as a question and answer period. If we can uh, address any of your concerns, we will at this time. If not, we will get back to you. And I would ask for uh, anybody to keep it around three or four minutes if possible. And that's more or less a guideline. Ms. Mounts, is there anybody sign up? Yes, sir. Mr. Mark Egger. Please come forward and state your name and address. Uh, Mark Eggert, 721 Campbell Circle in Front Royal. I'm back. I'm here today to further encourage you, the Board of Supervisors, to do something about the rogue EDA before they cause irreparable damage to the ability of Warren County to pro promote industry and trade, which is the purpose of having a local EDA. Two months ago, I brought to your attention an advisory opinion of the Virginia State FOIA Council, which included that, quote, this topic, the investigation regarding the EDA office building, does not appear to fall within any of the exemptions cited for the June 23rd, 2017 closed meeting. More broadly, there does not appear to be any exemption within FOIA that would allow closed meetings to be held to discuss police investigations generally. Given that the letter indicates that the investigation was discussed during the closed meeting, that the topic of the investigation was not identified as a subject in the motion to convene the closed meeting, and that there is no general exemption for the discussion of police investigations, it would appear that the, this discussion was not proper for a closed meeting. And again, the letter that this advisory opinion of the Virginia FOIA Council refers to is a July 17, 2017 letter from the EDA board signed by EDA Chairman Greg Drescher to the acting police chief of the Front Royal Police Department. The letter reads in full as follows. The Board of Directors of the Economic Development Authority discussed during closed session the investigation regarding the EDA office building that is currently being conducted by the Front Royal Police Department. The EDA hired a private investigator to assist in the investigation and we are now requesting that the Front Royal Police Department put the investigation on inactive status. I filed a FOIA request on January 30, 2018, to obtain records related to the private investigator that the EDA hired, and was told by Executive Director Jennifer McDonald that, quote, the EDA never hired a private investigator, end quote. I responded as follows. You state the EDA never hired a private investigator. The letter of July 17, 2017, signed by Greg Drescher, states, quote, the EDA hired a private investigator. One of these statements is false. Which one? She responded as follows. Quote, as I mentioned in the previous email, both of these statements are true. I responded as follows. There's no way in the English language that both of those statements could be true. And in a February 23rd, 2018 article by Josh Gully in the Northern Virginia Daily, we read this statement. McDonald said the board did not discuss the police investigation itself. She noted that closed sessions are not recorded in minutes and guessed that Drescher potentially made a mistake regarding the letter's wording. So now we have the unbelievable post hoc explanation as to why the closed meeting was not in violation of FOIA, that the EDA did not discuss the police investi investigation and did not hire in a private investigator. This, of course, is in direct contradiction with the letter of July 17, 2017 that states again, the Board of Directors of the Economic Development Authority discussed during closed session the investigation regarding the EDA office building that is currently being conducted by the Front Royal Police Department. The EDA hired a private investigator to assist in the investigation, and we are now requesting that the Front Royal Police Department put the investigation on inactive status. And the excuse that Mr. Drescher made a mistake regarding the letter's wording is laughable. Are we to believe that the superintendent of schools does not know how to write a coherent sentence that he wrote the EDA hired a private investigator when he actually meant the exact opposite? And he also appears to suffer from selective amnesia since he can't seem to remember what was discussed at closed meetings of the EDA board. So where do we stand now? We have a letter that the EDA is now stating contains two lies that they deliberately sent to the Front Royal Police Department, knowing it contained two lies, telling the police department to stop an investigation. <laughs> Let me go over that again to make sure you got it. 
The letter states, the Board of Directors of the Economic Development Authority discussed during closed session the investigation regarding the EDA office building that is currently being conducted by the Front Royal Police Department, and also the EDA hired a private investigator. They now state that neither of those statements is true. But more than three weeks after their illegal closed meeting, they sent that letter to the Front, police, Front Royal Police Department anyway. If that is not obstruction of justice, I don't know what is. I wonder what the EDA didn't want the police department to find out about the so-called break-in. And still, no one has been charged into this staged break-in. In another two weeks, the statute of limitations will come into play and no one will ever be able to be charged in the staged break-in. On a related note, we have the reported break-in of June 15, 2017 at the residence of the executive director, Jennifer McDonald, which is still being investigated over 10 months later by the Warren County Sheriff's Office. I guess they're still waiting for lab results, as they keep telling me every time I ask for my FOIA request to be fulfilled. And what a strange coincidence that the Warren County Sheriff is also the business partner of the EDA Executive Director. Are you Director. reaching a conclusion, Gen sir? Pardon? Are you reaching a conclusion? It's been almost six minutes. Yeah, soon. I don't want soon. I want... Quick. Well, well, according to quick. okay, I can, can quick. I say something? According yes, to county quick. code, if one of the members of the board wants to hear from me, you're required to let me speak. Whose code? County code. Oh, I thought you said town code. County code. You said town code. No, I said county code. You said town. So if any of you want to hear from me, he has to let me talk. I wonder why he doesn't want to hear from me. Because we've heard it before. And what a strange coincidence that the Warren County Sheriff is also the business partner of the EDA Executive Director, Jennifer McDonald. Through their LLC, Du Bois LLC, they made real estate purchases totaling $1,610,000 last spring. I wonder where that money came from. In a February 8, 2018 news article, which she initiated on the online newspaper Royal Examiner, Jennifer McDonald claims that she has won $1,800,000 over the last four years by regularly playing the slot machines at Charlestown. This is mathematically impossible. It's mathematically impossible to win at slots over the long term as a regular gambler, as she claims she has done. So the question is, why did she initiate contact with the news reporter with this bizarre story? And now would be a good time to talk about the IT Federal Project, which is an EB-5 visa project. The EDA gave away 30 acres of land with the big public announcement of a $40 million investment and 600 well-paying IT jobs. In reality, the contract with IT Federal only calls for a $2 million investment and a 10,000 square foot building and no mention of any jobs. It's going to be pretty crowded in that 10,000 square foot building for 600 people. They each will have about the size of this podium. And IT Federal has no okay, government contracts it. to speak of. That's it. Our policies say three minutes per speaker. There, there's no a, more than 15. There's that's a, our policy. County that's code it. requires no, if any of the members want to hear from want the to hear public. Anymore. I'd like to hear it here further. OK. It's, uh, IT Federal has no government contracts to speak of, as was claimed by the EDA. The EDA even took out a $10 million loan on behalf of IT Federal. A legitimate IT company with 600 employees would not lead, need a local EDA to obtain their financing for them. So 30 acres are given away to a shell company with no skin in the game. The latest weird website of Truck Tran is royal-phoenix.com, which is a website for another shell company named Royal Phoenix Trading LLC. According to this website, if it can be believed, this is the real business that will occupy the little warehouse that's being built at the Aftec site. What happened to IT Federal? What is this Royal Phoenix Trading Company? Are the 600 paying, high paying IT jobs really just a handful of warehouse jobs? An EB-5 project is basically a citizenship for sale scheme in the words of Senator Dianne Feinstein. Rich Chinese billionaires give 500,000 each and they receive, contrary to what Jennifer McDonald stated, not educational visas, but permanent residency visas or green cards for themselves and their families. And the project only has to create 10 jobs, but they don't even have to be direct jobs. Indirect jobs are acceptable. So if you say, well, I, McDonald's had to hire an extra cook, that counts. EB-5 projects are ripe for fraud, as witnessed by former governor and Clinton crime family member Terry McAuliffe's Green Tech Automotive scam. Terry McAuliffe is facing a multi-million dollar lawsuit for his part in this, quote, scam perpetrated by savvy and politically connected operatives and businessmen, end quote. Why don't you ask Tunica County, Mississippi, how they feel about McAuliffe's EB-5 program? Is this the type of economic development you want the EDA bringing to Warren County? 
When my daughter was on the Front Royal Town Council and asked a few simple questions about the IT Federal Project, which should have been able to be answered very easily in about five minutes, she was subjected to a totally disproportionate verbal abuse by the political establishment of this community. It made me wonder why asking a few simple questions elicited that type of response. And she was given a load of nonsense for answers. Something did not add up and it still does not add up. That is what prompted me to look into the activities of the EDA. And I will continue to look into things that don't add up. You all need to do the same. As I stated last time I addressed you all, you need to remove the entire EDA board and begin anew with a board that will put the interests of the community first. Thank you.